Heya Perek Dalid Mishnah Zion. We're going to dedicate our learning today in memory of the those people who gave their lives. Um, this is Yom Hazikaron for the made the ultimate sacrifice for the state of Israel and for the people of Israel. So Yehi Nishmatam Tzurot B'Tzor Hachayim. Okay, uh, we learned that the Zman Chiyuv, the time of the Chiyuv of Peah is the time of Ketzira. Okay? So therefore, uh, in the last Mishnah we learned that if a non-Jew cut down his field and then was mit Gayer, then the, it was Patur Min HaLeket and Shikha and Peah Patur from Leket and also from Peah. We'll leave Shikha in a second because when he cut it, it was a Nachri Shekatsara. The non-Jew cut it. Okay? And it's only Chaya from the time of Ketzira. So this, what, the same rule is true in this Mishnah as well. Says the Mishnah, Higdish Kama. Kama means if the produce is still attached to the field. So if I wanted to give my money to God. So the way I would do it is I would dedicate the money to the Beit HaMikdash. Okay, I would say, this is Hegdish. Here in my field, that's Hegdish. Okay, and then the Gizbar would come. The Gabai for the Hegdish would come and he'd sell it. Okay, and he'd sell it back at, a, at, a, at an increased, he would sell it or I could redeem it. So he would sell it and that money would go to Hegdish because what in the world is the Beit HaMikdash going to do with the field of wheat? Okay, so let's say I was Higdish Kama, so I made it Hegdish, and then Upada Kama, but I wanted to give, I wanted to redeem it. Personally, I'm not entirely sure why you wouldn't just give money to the Beit HaMikdash, but it, okay, whatever. You wanted to give your wheat to the Beit HaMikdash, and then you bought it back, and you, you pay back Karen Vachomish. So you bought it back while it was still attached. Kama. So let's read it again. Higdish Kama. If you made your wheat, your produce, your field, Hegdish, while it was still standing, it was still attached to the ground, Upadakama, and to say, and then you redeemed it back from the Gizbar, from Hegdish, Chayav. It's Chayav in, in uh, Peah. Okay? Peah and Lechet and Shicha. Why? Because when is the Hegdish, when, when is produce Chayav in all those things? Misha Ketzira, from the time that you would cut it. So therefore, you, it's still standing once you bought it back. It, hegdish is Patur, anything that's Hegdish is Patur from Peya and Leket and Shikha. But if it's privately owned, it's Chayav. So when you bought it back, you're Pada Kama. You bought it back, all this still Kama. So therefore, you're Chayav in Leapeka and Le, in Peya, Leket and Shikha. But uh, also, Omarim, if you bought it while it was Omarim, Omarim are bundles. We're going to learn in the future in a, in, in a couple of Mishnayot. The way they would cut it is, so I'm going to move back so you can see. Let's say this is my wheat. I grab a bunch of wheat, and you can see me, I grab a bunch of wheat, I cut it, and then I have this bundle, and I put it down in a bundle. Okay, I grab wheat, buy a, buy a bundle. And then at the end, I take those bundles, and I and I gather them up, and I make a pile. Okay, those amarim, that's amarim. So if I, if I made it hegdish, amarim, and then upada amarim, so I made it hegdish, after I had already put it into piles, then chayav. But, I'm chayav. Why? Because it was already chayav after I cut it. Misha ktsira. When I made it hegdesh, it was already chayav in leket shikhan peya. So then when I redeemed it, it returns to its original state. But, kama upada amarim, I made it hegdesh when it was attached. And then the gizbar went and hired somebody to cut it. And then I bought it back when it's amarim, ptura. Then I'm chayav in leket and shikha and peya. We're going to see according to the Tanakama. Why? Shibishat chovata. Haitap Tira. At the time that it was its obligation, at the time of the obligation, remember with Shah Katsira, then it was Ptura. Okay, it was not Chayab. I bought it back as Amarim. So who is, at what time was it obligated? At the time when the Gizbar was around. That's not my responsibility. That's not my responsibility. That's the responsibility of the Gizbar. And he's Patur. Hegdish is Patur from giving uh, Leket Shikha and Peya. Okay, all the commentators acknowledge. Remember we said last week, last Mishnah, excuse me, about Shikha. There's a machloket about Shikha. Because Rabbi Yudah said that it was Chi of Shikha was the Shat Imur. So in our case also, the Bartanur explains, Ulinyan Shikha, Pligi Rabbi Yudah V'Rabanan, Behegdish Kama Upada Omarim. Okay, remember we said, Kama Upada Omarim, your Ptura. Why? The Shat Chovata Ita Ptura. But here also, here also, that the Rab, remember we said, in this Mishnah, Rabbi Yudah said that Shikha is Mishat Imur. From the time that it was in bundles, from your in bundles. So now, in this case, I bought it back when it's Omarim, Imur, and I'm going to take those bundles. And think about what Shikha is. Shikha is when I'm picking up those bundles, I'm going to pick them up, and I'm going to go bring them over to put them into my big pile, in the Gadish. So if I forget one, that belongs to the Ani. 
And that's the time when you're Chayav and Shicha, says Rabbi Yehuda. So therefore, Rabbi Yehuda says, in this case also, if I was Higdish Kama Upada Amarim, I'm Chayav and Shikha. Whereas the Tanakama says, no, you're Patur. Why? Because the rules of Leka, Chikan, Peh are all the same. Similarly here, in this case, would be the same. The rules are all the same. That Higdish Kama Upada Amarim would be Patura, according to the Tanakama. Again, we were going to dedicate our learning to the memory of those uh, great people who made the ultimate sacrifice for the Jewish people. The learning of Mishnayot is a is a ilui nishmatam. It should be to their to the benefit of their souls. Say nishmatam tzura mitzur hachayim. If you have any comments or questions, contact me at rspolter at gmail.com. Have a great day.